We're joined by producer Alex Mendoza, who took a challenging time like the quarantine and created a feature film that takes a look at human behavior under extreme circumstances through a variety of perspectives. The result of this work is COVID-19, Sins and Virtues. Welcome, Alex. How are you? Thank you for inviting me to be here. It's very nice to see you again. It's a pleasure to see you. What's so lovely is not only do I get to talk about your project, but I get to see you because you're a, you're a dear friend that I've known for quite some time. And I, I think this is such a uh, wonderful idea when I learned about it. I remember thinking at one point, I hope this is something that we don't forget. Just because of the severity and because of the impact it's had on us. And so I think this idea is wonderful. It's going to record this period in history. So share with me, I understand that the theme is the cardinal seven sins and seven virtues. Elaborate. Uh, I have to admit to you, because you're my friend, that the origins of the film were very mundane. You know, I also do this apertura with uh, um, the American Cinematheque that we showcase Latino films in the Egyptian theater, the epicenter of, of Hollywood. And, um, and I was thinking how the party, the first after party at the Egyptian is gonna look like. But to make a party, I need a film. But how I can produce in three months, six months, well, it's going to take a year, a year and a half before they open the Egyptian again, okay, in, within a year and a half, how I can produce a film that always take years from concept to end. So, so I say, well, what do we do? What do we do? What do you want to tell? Asking myself. What do you want to tell? And I say, well, the, the effects of the, of, the, of the isolation. Not a documentary of what happened with COVID, but what's doing to people inside that are facing to be inside. So um, I say, well, that will be very nice to put the good, the bad, the sins and virtues. Oh. There you go. How I can produce, cut the time in production? You divide it in 14 times. I have seven cardinal sins and I have seven cardinal virtues, each one being produced inside, self-sufficient in 17 different set locations. So was each person responsible for their own one? Yes. I love this. I have a feature length film at hand and I did nothing for it. I love the idea and I love your honesty about how it was that you were thinking, okay, what are we gonna what are we gonna show at the theater in a few months? And you thought, why not? Let's come up with something, the obvious, the pandemic. So th thank you for your sincerity. I think that's great because I think a lot of ideas do come up that simply. Like you just have a thought and it's like, wait a minute, I think I could create something from this. So you have this idea and now your wheels are probably turning and you're getting a little excited. When you, who, like, who was the first person you spoke about, you spoke to? And then was well, it like a domino effect that it just continued, different people got oh, involved? It, it was it was so surprising. It was so unexpected. Because my first thought was, I'm not a producer. I have, as you know, I have 20 some years in, 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 of distribution experience. So I needed a producer, an actual producer. I have just presented a film that I like very much, the production of it. So I contact the producers that were friends of mine, for, you know, 15, 20 years, we have uh, of knowing each other, Jennifer Behrens and Mauricio Mendoza. Without them, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Okay? Uh, so 
the thing is, I called them and I pitched the idea on the phone. And Jennifer says, you got me a hello. And we say, okay, let's try, let's put together. I put this outline of the project, including the rules. Okay. And the rules were very simple. It had to be shot with assets at hand. You cannot use high-end camera. You can only use phone, laptop, or security cameras, okay? You cannot focus on COVID per se. COVID is your McGuffin. That is the thing that makes the, the story happen without being important for the story. I say to, Ma to Mauricio and Jen, let's find the teams. It's going to take us, I don't know, three, four weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's, start, let's start calling people. We know. All, we are, for many years in the business, we know a lot of people that produce and act and direct and write and all these people. So we start making phone calls. Two days. In two days, we were covered. And not only that, I had a waiting list. And we did it, and we are done. We well, no, sorry, and we are two weeks from the, from from being done. Well, let me put these steps: little bit of music, little bit of uh, of pretending, and a little bit of color balance, and we are done. You said, you know, in the most improbable time, but then that depends on perspective. What may seem improbable actually creates possibilities, and hasn't it? Been I wouldn't have been able to do something like this. If it were not for COVID, I fulfill a long time abandoned dream thanks to COVID. And I don't like COVID. One of my daughters fell into it. Serendipity came into, into play because everybody was bored to death. Everybody didn't care to work with no money. You couldn't spend money. That was one of the rules, only assets at hand. I didn't want someone to call a rental company or a friend in the rental company. I opened the rental, the thing to send me C stands and lights and no. With what you have on hand. And if you have a good camera, don't use it. No. <laughs> and then and then it was here's here's the theme. Now you have to write it. You have five days to write. Because we, we, this, we, we thought we only had two months maximum of isolation, that we were going to be in isolation. It was early April when we started. Um, so we say at least we finish photography before the lockdown is, is, is open. Then post-production can take as long as we need, but finish photo principal photography in those two months. So we put a very tight schedule for all the process. We broke all the rules. We, we say no rules, forget about strips, forget about day of days, no forms. We didn't need one form, okay? There was what we call the command center, but it was one spreadsheet, okay? And with that, we controlled the whole, the, the, the whole apparatus. Because why? Each team, was self-sufficient, both in source resources, whatever they have, okay, and in talent. You had all everyone's creative juices flowing. Like I, I, I feel a bit emotional about it. And clearly, it's something that's so important to you, and something that was near and dear to your heart. But this is exactly what creativity is about, and it couldn't. I mean, how do we, we couldn't even make this up. So this was something that was, and I'm sure they say that if you do what you love, it makes it that much easier. And every mm -hmm. single person that was involved in this, it was impacting them. So how could they not, they were coming from their, their truest place, from their most sincere place when they were producing this. And it was beautiful because... I have, I believe is, I think it's four of them 
than have kids. And let me tell you, they stole the show from the parents. Okay? And uh, I have one that, you know, Laura Patalan, uh, Chris, uh, uh, Gentified. She, she, she's now in Gentified. And uh, she is in isolation with her two daughters. Okay? So she said, yes, I want to play. So one of the daughters took the role of director. Days before, after, I get a call by them because they are at each other's throats to figure out who needs to say what to do. I, I had not even thought about that part, that it became a family affair because you're right. Everyone's at home with whoever you're with. So children or husband, you know, pets. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone. You, whoever is home is who's going to help you. And so you gave this opportunity, and I'm going to say you, because you created this possibility for all of these individuals to express themselves, to be creative, to bond with their family in, in a unique way. And so now what, I, what I'd like to know is, so now all, the, all of these pieces are coming together. Who's editing it? And how do you know, is there someone overseeing it? Did you want a flow of how the each episode would go? Well, what we did is, uh, to begin with, the production company is a co that we form between the 50 plus filmmakers, okay? We, we 50 fi filmmakers in 17 locations in two countries. Uh, the the, the co-op, to begin with, we start with nobody makes a penny more than whoever works with us. Everybody does the same. And it was all fun, um, it was, I play in a, a, a studio executive. Everybody learn. Everybody, there's actors that have never written. There's directors that have never acted. There's, there's producers that have never hold the camera and they don't know how to frame, no? Things like that. The experience to going from breaking all the rules. I'm a stickler for the process of, of filmmaker. I, I understand the process and I believe that that is the best way to be able to finish one, okay? There, there's a specific way to do it. There's forms to do it. There's strips to handle the schedule. It's, the, all these things have a, a even a step-by-step, a, step, a progress, progression of procedures that has to be followed to finish a film. We broke them all. This goes even well beyond what I first thought this project was. As I said before, you created an outlet. You got people united. You have now all these individuals that can now say they worked on this project. And it's not like other projects, in my humble opinion, that you say, oh, I'm in this movie and I, you know, it's more about the accolades. This one is about a project that, that impacted globally <laughs> thousands, billions of individuals. And all of, the, all of these individuals are now connected to this particular project. The flow of the anthology was extremely important. Okay? And we experimented with different ways and, and we say, well, let's see if we could try to Put a chronology on it, and then we say no, no, no. We we need to to how we started feeling and how we progress it to that type of thing. The, using the stories that the, all these people have given us, wonderful stories. Did everyone edit their own piece? And um, we had an editor. Excuse me. One editor or more than one editor. Or to put together the anthology, one editor. But each episode was delivered, finished. We added another supervising editor to go and work with one of the teams that have delivered uh, a rough cut that obviously they were having troubles. So they went in and helped and, uh, them. Uh, 
And then we have our main editor that is the one that put the entire anthology together. That's the beauty of film is you can't, you can't do it alone. So on that note, I am eager to see a little bit of this pro of this project of yours. And so let's watch the promo. Back to work. Things are gonna go back to normal soon, okay? This is gonna change everything. Alex, congratulations. I have to say that little glimpse, I don't think will even compare to what everyone else can watch. So, what do you hope people take away when they see this film? Ah, creativity cannot be stopped. Hope cannot be stopped. Love cannot be stopped. Friendship cannot be stopped. We will creatively find a way to adapt. And that's what we do. There may be, once we are out of it, all these we have learned probably will modify what we are doing next. All these people are doing your vision and getting your little ding idea, the light bulb. I have an illustrator that I, you know Sergio Arau. Actually, the name sounds familiar. I think I may have met him a lot when well, I was. De Jerez, actor. A Day Without Mexicans, he's the director and writer. He's a renaissance man. So where do you go next with this project though? Like how big do you hope to take it? Do you want to take it to film festivals? Do you, I mean, have you even gotten to that part of thinking? No, 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 no. I know this revision. I have been there. I've been for many years. I know what it is. If you don't have these pretentious things of having and again, we started, this is all fun. There's no money for motivation. We will seek the money. We will want the money, but we are not gonna suffer to get the money. Why? I spent nothing. We have spent a little money. Compared to those hundreds of millions that these people spent. An independent film. This, had, this has nothing to do with money. This was about allowing your creative juices to flow, collaborating, as you said, with friends, loved ones, and creating this project that will be this piece of history, really, because we will never forget what's, what we're, what's occurring. It is, it is not that pretentious. To begin with, I was not the only one in the, with the idea in the, in the world. I know for a fact of about... For a fact, I know of 14 different projects similar to ours that are collections of shorts. They have the same idea, divide the work in between many people, okay? And, and make them shorts. Ours are not shorts, it's not a collection of shorts. It, they are episodes following one theme, Sins and Birches that ties all of them together. Uh, is, is from the beginning was a, intended as an anthology feature film. Well, 
a little bit after the beginning. It was, we were going to go and do an anthology feature film. And, a, and not only a collection of shorts. Shorts, there's many. Collections of shorts are about 14 feature length film. I believe ours is the only one that was shot on isolation. So uh, now with all this streaming, the Hulus, the Amazons, the uh, there's not wide open doors because there's always gatekeepers, but there's ways that are easier to put your film in front of a lot of people. We just want to put it out there. We just want to, I want my family to see it. I have a list of 225 thank yous on it. Really? Okay. Uh, that's what I want. Now, if we do the premiere, then uh, uh, the next day we should be in uh, in one of the streamers, yeah, and and then you know, of course the premiere will give us the publicity for people to find us in the in in between these thousands of thousands of options. Do you see a part two to this? Oh yeah, we started it. Oh really? Film it. There is a second wave coming. We will be back in isolation. Now we are telling the people, start preparing, start writing. Of the first wave, we already, already have seven of them, no, six of them that are coming to the second wave that want to play again. Everybody loved it, <laughs> but, but like Laura, she said, my daughter said, no way, it's too much work. <laughs> So pretty soon we're gonna be able, right now we are focusing on finishing the, f the first film. Remember when I, <laughs> I cried at the beginning? Uh, it is because the, the entertainment industry, the film industry have never, never, never been put out of business. It has taken recessions Big depressions, big recessions, middle recessions, small recession, uh, crashes, terrorism. But this one brought the whole world, not only our industry, but the whole world down. And I couldn't believe it. I couldn't accept it. I couldn't say it's impossible. We, we thrive in these times. People need entertainment to forget how horrible it's out there. So I couldn't believe it. We had to find a way to do it. I'm so privileged. I'm so privileged that I have so many creative people allowing me to exploit it. It's incredible humbling that so many people who, again, all of them professional, Okay. How I, what I, to whoever wants to get into the business, okay, remember one thing is not what you know is, Mabel, answer. Do you know? <laughs> wrong. Oh, creativity. Is who knows you. I know who Steven Spielberg is. He's going to bring in something. <laughs> I look like Steven Spielberg. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> the man doesn't know who I am. What good does to me? And you have to... The only way to do that is building Relationship. a network. But it's not only a network of professionals, colleagues, that you see in, in conventions and conferences and everything is money. No. For what we just talked about, 
the industry make friends by itself. You are partying with these people. You are working months together, all using the same table to eat and things like that. You build friendships, some of them for life. Okay? So make sure that you make very good friends in the industry if you want to be on it. Without them, no way. Because again, this industry values more than knowledge, values more talent. But values more trust. The beauty is that now a lot of people can try to see, can I do it too? To begin with, you can produce without money, just with one. That didn't happen until, what, 15 years ago? And now there's a lot of talent popping up pop, 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 that before they didn't have any chance to call attention to the, to, the, to the big boys. And the big boys now are looking for those things popping up. You're going to be successful on it. It all depends on your skill, your talent, your knowledge, and the people that trust you. It seems like a perfect way to end this. Trust, friendship, value. Three things that I hold dear with you. I value you. you as a person and the work that you're doing. I trust you. Thank you for trusting me to, to share this project that you're doing. And you're I just wish you continued success. Love you. Thank you, everyone. Well, we want to make sure that our viewers see sins and virtues, COVID-19, sins and virtues, that you said in just a few weeks you will be finishing up and you're expecting to have a part two as this anthology continues, unfortunately, under these circumstances.